The Idaho College murders. Lawyers for Brian Koberger filed documents outlining the suspect's alibi. They claim he was driving in a remote area on the night of the murders and say cell phone data backs up his story. Kena Whitworth is covering the case. Good morning, Kena. Yeah, George, good morning. So this is the first time that we're seeing how Brian Koberger's legal team plans to challenge the forensic evidence against him. They say they have expert testimony that will use those cell phone records to prove that he was more than 20 miles away from the crime scene in a rural area at the time of the murders. Overnight, lawyers for Brian Koberger, the former Ph.D. student accused of stabbing four University of Idaho students to death, saying they plan to use analysis of cell phone tower data to show Koberger was not near the crime scene at the time of the murders. All rise. Last August, Koberger's lawyers claimed in a court filing the suspected murderer was instead driving around alone, as he often did when the murders were committed in November of 2022. The judge requesting Koberger's lawyers provide specific details, like names and addresses about his alibi that could be corroborated. The new filing claims he was driving in the opposite direction of the King Road home to hike and run and or see the moon and stars something he did on several occasions, and that his cell phone contained numerous photographs taken on several late evenings and early mornings, including in November, depicting the night sky. Authorities say Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were killed between 4 and 4.20 a.m. on November 13th in their off-campus home. Experts say that while cell phone records can estimate where a person is, it's difficult to pinpoint someone's exact location, especially in rural or remote areas. I can tell you with scientific certainty from his cell phone records, if he was connected to the Moscow cell tower or the Pullman cell tower, but I can't pinpoint him. Authorities also say for a two hour period between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., Koberger's phone stopped reporting to the network entirely, which is consistent with the phone being out of service or in airplane mode. Now, his lawyers say that he was an avid runner and hiker and that because the school year got busy, those hikes turned into nighttime drives in the countryside. Now, Brian Koberger will be back in court next month for a change of venue hearing. Guys. OK, Kana, thanks. Dan Abrams is back. Is cell phone data strong? It can be. Uh, it's used in a lot of cases now. But remember, prosecutors here also want to use cell phone data to show that he was at the home or near the home and that he'd been there multiple times before. But here's the difference. Prosecutors are linking up the phone with video of the car, which matched Brian Koberg. Now, we haven't even gotten to talk about the DNA evidence yet. But when you talk about even just those two pieces of evidence, cell phone in conjunction with surveillance video of what they believe is his car, together prosecutors believe they have a strong case. But as you can tell, when it comes to cell phone evidence, there can be different interpretations and different experts can make different assessments. And that's what it seems we're going to see here. Can you think of another case where cell phone data was such a critical part? Yeah. I mean, look, there are a number of cases I've seen where cell phone evidence becomes critical, but it tends to be supporting evidence, right? Because there's ambiguity around it, because there's a lack of certainty as to exactly where someone is, it's typically used to support a case and not to say, see, this proves the entirety of our case. And how about that DNA evidence? Look, and it's going to be critical, right? They're going to have to make another argument as to why his DNA was found on a sheath on the knife at the scene. And so they've got a challenge for them. The reason they're laying out the alibi now is because under Idaho law, they actually have to present the alibi defense at this point in the case. Under Idaho law, if you're going to say, I was somewhere else, you actually have to lay it out before the case starts. For some of the other pieces of the defense, we may learn that as the case moves on. But if the DNA is there on that knife. It, well, it, look, it's, look, there's a lot of evidence in this case. All right, <laughs> let's be really clear. If the DNA is there, they're either going to say they're going to challenge the way the DNA was done. They may say it was planted. Who knows? Okay.